Hello. Today I want to do a follow-up on something that I've already posted and it is about uh, self-authorization versus spiritual authorization. I was a little bit angry when I posted the first part and I was rough. I was mean on that. I was stronger than I should have been. I was not displaying real compassion, the compassion of Jesus Christ. And it's been bothering me. And I've been thinking about it for a few days. And uh, so now I'm going to come back with a part two on that. And hopefully I'll be much more kind. Anyway, when we are beginning servants of obedience, when we're doing baby steps only, when we're just going out into the world and doing works for the Holy Spirit and we really are unsure of ourselves and it's been 53 years for me and I'm still unsure of myself many times about what's going on and what I should be doing, what I should be saying. And this exact same thing happened. That's how I know I'm supposed to make this part two. This exact same situation where I wasn't sure happened to me just the other day. I was at a place and there was a bunch of other people there. And uh, a row in front of me was a young man and wife, and they had two small kids, you know, like five years old and seven years old. And at that age, you know, it's natural. It's innocent for kids to have energy. They got energy. You know, and sitting still is tough for them. You know, and their parents helped them. They gave them crayons and coloring books to help keep them still. And they got bored with that, and then they, one of them wanted Cheerios, you know, so he had Cheerios. And, you know, if you're a parent, you know, they eat a couple of Cheerios, and then, you know, they start licking them and sticking them on their nose, you know, and they, they start playing with them, playing with their food, okay? So, uh, you know, the kid was bored, and he was playing with his food and, you know, making a little bit of a mess, and the mother turned and saw it, and she cleaned it all up and told the kid to, you know, stop doing that, and, you know, she was a good mother, patient, patient, understanding. These kids are innocent. You know, it's not a punishable offense to be an innocent child. The people who punish their children for being innocent and, you know, busy, their energy level is high. You punish your kid for being that. The kind of parents that do that destroy the child's innocence. This is really an act of sin by the parent's part on the kids. Yes, understanding, compassion, teaching is good, but to make everything a punishable offense, this is wrong. This is a crime against innocence. You know, people just don't get it. Anyway, after um, whatever it was, was over. You know, the, the parents left and they took their kids and, and there was a woman sitting right nearby me and after the parents and the kids left, the woman turned to me and she had this angry look on her face and it was like, boy, did you, she says to me, boy, did you uh, see those kids? They were really nasty. And I'm like, what? And right away I recognized this is exactly what I was talking about. Here was another person like me that as an innocent child, you know, innocent behavior was a punishable offense by the parents. She clearly had been punished because I could see that anger boiling up in her. You know, the anger that I myself had spent so many decades, and I still struggle with it, to get it out of me from the way that, you know, my parents, especially my dad, treated everything innocent as a punishable offense, and that's wrong. So I knew exactly where this woman was coming from because I had experienced the exact same thing. You know, and that's actually one of the things that drove me into finding the Holy Spirit at such a young age because I was looking for sanctuary, spiritual sanctuary drove me, you know, what the devil had meant for evil, God turned around and used for good in my life. So anyway, 
uh, I didn't know what to say. And here I am in this situation, self-authorization versus spiritual authorization. I did not have any spiritual authorization to say anything to this woman. Now it's up to me. Am I going to self-authorize myself to say something? I mean, it's the right time and it's the right place, but do I have the right words? You know, God's not giving me, the Holy Spirit isn't giving me the right words. Moses said, it's in your heart and in your mouth. Well, God was not putting his words in my mouth. I only had my own words based on my own understanding, based on my own experience, and that ain't, to me, that ain't good enough. So, uh, I didn't know if I was supposed to say anything or anything, but she kept going on, and she was, you know, starting to get more angry. So, I took a pearl of great value that I had learned from the Holy Spirit. And I was thinking, if you throw your pearls down in front of swine, they'll stomp on it, and then they'll want to kill you. So that's a risk that we take when we self-authorize, because we don't know who we're talking to. Are we talking to somebody who will benefit from instruction? Or are we talking about somebody who's a deliberate agent of the devil, acting like they need instruction, only so that they have then an excuse to become violent? And there are servants of the devil out there like that. Make no mistake about it. The evil one has his people out there too. And they um, disguise themselves as regular people, but they ain't. That's why the Bible warns us not to throw our pearls down in front of swine. Or they'll stomp on them and then want to kill us too. So anyway, it was a question in my mind and I thought, well, I, I, I'm, I'm not too afraid of this woman, you know. So uh, physically beating me up, you know. Anyway, so uh, I took my pearl of great value and I, what I thought was the right words, because I had no authorization, and I told it to her. I said, uh, Christianity is compassion. Compassion for everybody. Now is a chance for us to practice our Christianity. Now is a chance for us to have compassion you know, if these little kids, them being uh, busy, you know, bothers us, then now is our chance to practice compassion for everybody, unlimited in every way. It's a chance for us to prove our Christianity by living according to the way that Jesus Christ lived, with compassion for everybody, you know. So that did not work on her. It, it, it like totally went over her head, totally went by her, you know. So right away, instantly, after all these decades, I knew that these were the wrong words. This had no effect on her, you know. So um, anyway, I thought, well, I'll, I'll say it a second time because I don't know what else to say. So I went to this pearl of great value and, you know, she started going on even more about how bad these kids were behaving and they're just innocent kids behaving normally and naturally. And, yeah, it, it is not a punishable offense for them to be innocent and happy, even if they are a little bit busy. That's not a punishable offense. And it should never be a punishable offense. So she's, she came back even a little bit stronger so I said it a second time. Compassion for everybody means our chance, our opportunity to live like Christians and to prove it. Well, that absolutely didn't work on her at all. So, you know, again, self I'm, I'm thinking in my head, I'm self-authorizing. Holy Spirit did not tell me to say anything to her. Am I making things worse? Am I making God's plans worse? You know, by saying something, and I don't know if it's the right thing to say, and clearly it's not having an effect, but these are pearls of great value. And they're not having any effect. Well, she's not stomping on them and trying to kill me, so I know she's not working for the devil. You know, she's a person that uh, needs some kind of a word, some kind of spiritual 
medicine for the spiritual pain she's feeling inside of her soul. These are spiritual sicknesses, you know, anger and resentment. These are spiritual sicknesses, and they need spiritual medicine. They need spiritual healing. They need a spiritual doctor, not a physical doctor, you know. Unless their hate and anger gets so bad that it becomes a, a an actual mental condition, then th then they need a spiritual healing, and they need, you know, mental physical doctor. But um, again, I'm the whole time I'm asking God, God, tell me what to do. You know, should I? I'm self authorizing, and I don't like it. I don't like self authorizing. I don't know if I'm ruining your plans or not. I have no way of knowing. I need your guidance. You know what? If you want this woman to have some spiritual medicine, some spiritual healing in her soul, now is the time to talk because I'm here waiting for your word that I can pass it on to her. Nothing. I'm not getting any input from the boss. None at all. The boss, the Holy Spirit is the boss. So, I thought, okay, I'll take it up a notch higher. I'll use a different pearl of great value. And this is a pearl of great value. You know, I'm always saying, you take your Bible, you lay it on the table, you flip through the pages till one sticks on your finger, and you open it up and you read, and you meditate on that, and that's what the Holy Spirit is trying to teach you. It is one of the many different forms of communication between us and the Holy Spirit. Putting a Bible on the table in front of you and running your fingers on the pages till one sticks you, that's one of the many forms of communicating with the Holy Spirit. Test me on this. I don't care who you are, I don't care where you are. I don't care what you think. Test me on this. Get a Bible. Lay it on the table. Run your fingers on the edges till a page sticks to your finger. And open it up and read whatever you're reading and meditate on until the word of the Holy Spirit eventually answers it for you. What, is this going to take, what, 10, 15 minutes? No. Could take 10 years. Could take 13 years. Could take 53 years. Could take 53 years and you still didn't get an answer. Keep on doing it. 10 times a day. 100 times a day. Let it be the... Last thing you think of before you go to bed at night, let it be the first thing you think of when you wake up in the morning. You meditate on this until you have enough hours of meditation on there where the Holy Spirit then speaks to you as a whisper of inspiration and explains it to you. And when that happens, understand you just had a real life one-on-one -on -one conversation with the Holy Spirit in real time. Because the person explaining the meaning that you've been meditating on, the one giving you that explanation is the Holy Spirit is the same person who wrote the Bible in the first place. The Bible was written by men, inspired by the Holy Spirit, no matter what the servants of the devil claim contrary. And there's nothing that the servants of the devil can't do that God can't turn around and use for good. They think they're outsmarting God every chance. They're just fooling themselves. So here I am with the woman, and I don't know what to say to her, because am I self-authorizing? Am I ruining God's plan? So I take it up a higher notch. You know, I had recently been flipping open the Bible, and God's been showing me this about how God is working his plan, whether we see it or not. That's what I'm meditating on now. God is working his plan. Sirach, chapter 51, verse uh, 
Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Proverbs chapter 3, 20 and 21. By his knowledge, the depths break open and the clouds drop down dew. So by God's knowledge, by God's plan, the depths break open. You know, big upheaval, huge upheaval. You know, destroying continents, destroying nations, destroying individual people, their hardness in their heart. Depths break open according to his plan. God's working his plan. And the clouds drop down dew. Healing, nourishment, replenishment, new life, soothing, you know, compassion, huge upheavals, and on the other side of the spectrum, healing, dew falls from the clouds, gentleness, huge upheavals, and the, the kindest of gentleness. It's all the full range, the full gamut of his plan. So that's what I've been meditating and working on. So with this woman, I took it up a notch and I told her. I just looked at her and I said, God is working his plan whether we see it or not. And as I was saying it, I could hear faintly the inspiration of the Holy Spirit saying it at the exact same instant that I was saying. So I was hearing it like in stereo from my mouth, but I know it was actually his words. His, like Moses said, words are already in your mouth. Because I was connected to the Holy Spirit, because I am connected to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was speaking in this instance, speaking his words from my mouth, and I didn't even know it was going to happen. That's when I knew I was safe. Because it was not me given this pearl of great value. It was the Holy Spirit himself. The Holy Spirit through my mouth was speaking to this woman. And the results were electrifying. This woman was getting more and more worked up. Every time I said, you know, compassion, she was just getting more and more angry, more and more worked up. I understand that. You know, because as people relive the abuse Spiritual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, you know, all kinds of abuse that they experienced in their childhood from mean parents, from mean people, mean guardians, all kinds of mean people, mean neighbors, mean everybody, you know, and it scars these people's souls. And I could, I recognized it because I, I dealt with it, I still deal with it to this day, although I, you know, got it. Tremendously under control now, you know. Anyway, when the Holy Spirit's words put his words in my mouth, God is working his plan even though we don't see it. Even though we don't see it. That was a word for her and it was a word for me. Because I knew I had been working on this exact same thing. In Proverbs 3, 20 and 21, it's all about God working his plan. We just need to relax and let it happen. We need to relax and let God be God. Instead of thinking that we are somehow in control, because we ain't. If we're in control, then why are we in the mess that we're in right now? If we are in control, We're, we are not in control. Let God be God. Anyway, when I said that to her, it was the results. It was like electricity went through her whole body. And I knew she was touched by the Holy Spirit for just an instant. Because that is the, re, the, the way people react. And she kind of just looked at me. And I could tell she was still worked up. So I, I repeated it a second time. As calmly and as kindly as I could, with all the compassion that I could, I said, God is working his plan even though we don't see it. And after that, she completely went down to calm. 
So those were the right words at the right time, in the right way, in the right instance, in the right situation. And I didn't know what they were. This is the problem when we self-authorize. Spiritual authorization, the Holy Spirit put his words in my mouth and went out to her. Just like when I was seven years old in second grade math class and the teacher asked me, you know, what is the answer to this question? And I was, I was, I don't remember the question, but uh, the answer was eight. That I know. And uh, I was going to say, I, I don't know. I, 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 I started to say, ah, uh, and the word of the Holy Spirit said to me, eight, and his word came out of my mouth. I started off as I, and I turned, I don't know, it's eight, eight. I swear I was going to say, I don't know, and instead the word eight came out. And I swear I was going to say that, and I, I had nothing to do with the word eight coming out of my mouth. And the teacher said, yeah, that's the right answer, and went on. And from that instant on, I knew that God is real. And that if he was willing to save me in the time of trouble, that I would be stupid to ignore him in the future. Because trouble comes all the time. Who couldn't use somebody saving them from trouble? So, self-authorization, spiritual authorization, we don't always know what we're doing. After I said it to this woman the second time, she had completely calmed down. All the tension that was in her soul, it was like medicine. God's words are like a medicine to her soul, to my soul, to your soul. God's words are a medicine to all our souls. The spiritual sickness from emotional abuse that we have inside our souls, you know, was cured, healed. I hope that woman now makes big strides in getting all of the poison, the spiritual sickness of being abused, being treated mean, in her past, I hope that all goes out of her, that she returns back to the spiritual purity of which we were all born. You know, children are not born with anger and abuse in their soul. They're not born that way. We get it from being in this world. We get it from the people around us in this world, that they got it, and then they pass it on to us. You know, the sins of the father are visited upon the son. The abuse of the father, the father turns around and then passes that on to the son. And the daughter and everybody else he gets a chance to. So, as we are obedient servants of God, going out in the world, doing little baby steps, acts of obedience... You know, trying to trying to live Christian lives as best as we can with what we've got and what we know. You know, sometimes we just have to make a decision. Am I going to give a pearl of great value? Am I going to am I going to you know say something that, to help alleviate somebody's spiritual sickness in their soul? Help them get back to the original condition of the way God. We were all born pure, and we're not pure now. And we need to get back to that. If for no other reason to make our lives much more peaceful for ourselves to live. So, anyway. We never know if we self-authorize, we can cause disaster. You know, we could... Like I did at first, compassion is actually stumbling words. I was stumbling around looking for words. They're good words, but they were not the right medicine 
for what she had. The right, they were not the right medicine for what I had. The right medicine, you know. Trying to cure a headache using, uh, you know, something that's not meant for headaches. It's the wrong medicine for what ails you. The right medicine for what ailed her and for what ailed me was that God is working his plan whether we see it or not. So I'm, I'm grateful that the Holy Spirit had compassion on me and had compassion on her. Compassion on me that I wasn't saying things that were ruining his plans. You know, I'm trying to help, but the road to hell is covered with good intentions. You know, people have good intentions, but what they're saying and what they're doing is the wrong medicine at the wrong time in the wrong way, and it's making things worse. You know, when I told her compassion, she just got angrier and angrier and more excited, more pumped up, you know, with excitement, and, and, and she was starting to get, you know, her blood pressure was going up. That's for sure. It's the wrong medicine, you know. The road to hell was paved with my good intentions. It was just making it worse for her. And then the Holy Spirit jumped in. Thank God for that. Thank the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit. He jumped in and said the right medicine, spiritual medicine, for the right spiritual problem. He knows. I don't. He knows. And you don't know either. But, you know, we do the best we can with a contrite heart and with a pure spirit. And so that's my follow-up on uh, self-authorization versus uh, spiritual authorization. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we self-authorize with the best of intentions and it doesn't work. Maybe we've even made things worse. And maybe we made we were right. Maybe it was the right thing. But you know what? We are stumbling blindly. I was stumbling blindly. I was using good medicine. You know, compassion for everybody is Christianity. And uh, that is good medicine. But it wasn't the right medicine for what she had. So, anyway, when will the learning end? It'll never end. Not as long as we're alive. Only until Judgment Day when God's full glory comes through us and washes away. You know, uh, a fireman has got that high-pressure hose and it can blow bricks off of a brick wall. You know, I've seen that on TV. They hit the wall and bricks fly off. You know, when the Holy Spirit, when the glory of God, the glory of God in heaven comes like a high-pressure hose and just blasts all this sin, all this sickness, all the spiritual sickness, it just blasts it all away from us, blasts it all out of us. You know, and we're back to the way we were originally born. It won't end until after that happens, our learning. So, amen. God bless. Meditate on this. Ask God, hey, you know, I, I really don't want to be talking on my own. I want you to be guiding me in what I say. That's the safe way. That's the right way. But sometimes we're in a situation where we just have to learn for ourselves. And that's a part of the learning experience too. So, Always understand that we on our own are nothing. But with the Holy Spirit, we are held up by Him. We are supported by Him. The Holy Spirit is what's good, not us. We're, you know, we're lucky that He chooses to work with us at all. Because He doesn't have to. But He likes it. And for some reason, He, he likes being with His children. You know, it's natural to like to be with your children. I like to be with him. So, 
Amen. God bless and meditate on the Holy Spirit. And try never to self-authorize unless you absolutely have to. And then you do keep asking God to tell you what to say. Maybe he will and maybe he won't. But you got to try. Amen.